Alright, what is going on everybody? Here we are back at the Surfside Jetty. The previous video that I made, I was using the GoFish cam. But we got some improvements this time. So let's go ahead and tie it on and hopefully we get some crystal footage. What is going on everybody? Here we are back at the Surfside Jetty. The previous video that I made, I was using the GoFish cam, but we got some improvements this time. We're gonna take off the green float and we're gonna, we're gonna fly it out that way. And we also, last time we had the light on, it wasn't dark, it's murky, but I think that having the light on during the day kind of messed up the footage. So it, it, it look, you can see the strike, but it, is, it doesn't look clear. So today we're gonna cast out the, the GoFish cam. Check it out y'all. Without the floats and with the light off, all right? So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna attach it to this six foot third coast leader. And the reason that I'm using a six foot leader is because if a shark comes up, up to six feet, at least I know that I'm not gonna get cut off by the whip, by the, by the tail slap. All right, so we're pretty safe. So let's go ahead and tie it on and hopefully we get some crispy footage. setting up the Snow Pro Splash Drone 4. People always ask me what kind of drone I'm using. This is it. There's going to be a link in my description that takes you to the Snow Pro website that's going to give you 10% off this drone, all right? So it's a nice discount. One of the first things that I do with this drone, I turn it on. I let it sit for like five minutes to get a nice connection. And after that, I will calibrate the drone twice, all right? Important that you calibrate this drone because you don't want to lose it, all right? You, don't, you know, it says to calibrate it once, it works just fine, but I do it twice to be on the safe side, all right? So these drones are expensive, it's a big investment. It's totally worth it because you can achieve distances that you previously could not achieve. If you're shark fishing and it, the, the waves are, the wind is blowing like 20, 25, the breaks are like six feet, you can fly right over and drop a nice bait right, in the, right at the beach. So let's wait for it to load up, get connection, and we'll calibrate and then we'll fly out the bait. All right, so we dropped the camera down and it looked much more clear than the last video. The last video was a little dark because I had the light on, but as you can see, look how long it takes for this camera to drop to the bottom. And then as it drops, you can clearly see how dark and murky the water gets until it hits the bottom. There is a lot of current, you know. The surface, this day the wind was blowing like 10 or 15 out of the southeast, but then down there it is blowing, it's moving, it's very swift. There's gonna be some other footage later on in the video where the fish are active around the bait. And some of those fish are getting pushed around. But for right now, you can see how murky it is down here and how swift the current is.
One of my favorite parts about this video is the different types of fish that approach the bait. Of course, like always, the hardhead is going to be the most prevalent fish at the bottom. You're going to see these hardheads just casually swim around, They're sniffing uh, the baits. It's a cut mullet, so they love that. Those guys will throw anything. You put poop on there, they're going to eat that too. They're just, you know, checking out the camera. They check out the leader, and this bait is a little too big for these catfish to eat, so which is, they leave it alone. But then you also see whiting approach the bait, and it's interesting because whiting, their mouth is at the bottom of the of their head and you can clearly see why it's like that because these whiting are just smelling and sensing what's at the bottom and you'll see a, a few medium-sized whiting scour around and then you start seeing um, croaker sniffing around and then you start seeing gap tops eventually big game starts to pop up but the thing is that our water here in texas is so murky it's really hard to get a clean picture this jetty here, this part of the jetty is probably about 30 feet, so the sunlight has trouble getting to the bottom, plus the murkiness. As we get to the end, we start to see some big fish pull up. It's a big fish. A lot of weight. Nice. Look at the nice shark.
Alright, let's get the other. Check it out, y'all. Nice shark. About to take this hook out. Very well hooked. There we go. Got it. Got a nice shark here. We got this on camera, so hopefully we get the nice footage of it. All right, we're gonna let it go. Nice, healthy shark. Good jetty shark here. It was pulling no drag at first, but then once it got close to the rocks, it really started pulling drag, all right? Now let's put it back. Now the reason that I call this kind of dumb is because on the way home I'm driving and I was like, you know what, that shark, I was kind of, it was kind of hard to identify because, you know, sharks are hard to identify, especially when they're smaller sharks. You know, each shark has its specific feature that defines and that's how you're going to find out what kind of shark it is. You know, like sandbar sharks, really high dorsal fins, bull sharks, the size and the girth and black tips, of course, spinners, you know, and all this other stuff. But when it comes to smaller sharks, it can be really hard to identify. So with this one, I didn't get it on camera because I was trying to really uh, get this hook out and everything is, if you look at the teeth, this is a fine tooth shark. And um, so I'm driving home and I'm like, you know what? That was a, a large fine tooth shark. You know, it was almost, it looks small on camera. You know, it's probably like four and a half feet. and It had some weight to it. And I was like, I'm going to check something out real quick. So as soon as I got home, I, I didn't even unload. I went straight to the PC. Man, I need to check the record on this thing. <laughs> sure enough, when I pull up the record for the fine tooth shark, this shark here that I caught at the jetty would have shattered the record. It would have blown the previous record away that was broken in 2012 or set in 2012 because this shark weighed more than nine pounds. This shark was 30 pounds, 35 pounds, maybe even 40. The thing is that I don't have a certified weight scale to measure the fish. And in Texas, you can only harvest these sharks if they're 64 inches or bigger. This fish was not 64 inches. So we let it go. We probably could have measured it and gotten some really good documentation. But of course, you know, I'm in the moment. I'm trying to get these fish out and I don't want to leave the fish out too long and let it go quickly. So yeah. Felt kind of, felt kind of dumb, and I was like, "Man, I just, I think I just let an opportunity swim away." 